How you doing, James? Hard to hear at JTEC, and we're going to go over a little bit of an explanation of an exploded view here of a 4L60E uh, automatic transmission. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the little gear or some of the little components um, as I have it torn apart here, and how to inspect and what you're really looking at. First, I'm going to start basically from the output side of the tranny. Uh, this one here doesn't have the output shaft or the component on it. I'm just going to go over this last one. So the action area here, carrier assembly. Um, it's made up of a planetary gear. So you got your sun gear. Obviously, this part of the sun gear, which is going to go inside the planetary gears. Cut it in a nice helicoil shape. So if you're off the slanted down the cut, provides more strength, more teeth to teeth reactor. Uh, Touching, and it also makes it require quieter gearing. Well, the sun gear portion of it. Here's your ring gear. I'm sorry, as you were the planetary gears. Planetary pinions, so you know, obviously make sure that they're all present. There's not a lot of gap to it. Um, when you're, if you're to tear one of these apart to rebuild it, you're going to want to, you know, use the manufacturer's manual, uh, which I do happen to have here on the computer. But checking on your spacing to ensure that you've got clearances on both sides. Uh, looking for any deterioration, anything loose on it. Right here is where your clutches will sit. You're going to look for any deteriorated, uh, broken teeth or chipped here that might might allow a clutch to either damage the clutch plates or to go for it. And then the actual carrier assembly, same thing. This is the outer ring gear portion of the planetary gear set. Also still has the um, Clutch teeth to it here, so it'll be uh, started and started or stopped or free spinning, depending on what's uh, what's going on with the clutch. Now we're going to go on to the next portion. Here the transmission. Okay, the next component we have is going to be your low and reverse clutch and spacing plate section. So these right here are going to go your clutch plates and your spacing plates for your low and reverse clutch. Um, right now they're all misaligned, but you're going to have your, your spacer plates, your disc plates, and then you're going to have your friction plates. And on here on your friction plates, you want to inspect obviously the internal teeth, so that way you see if there are any are bent or broken, any discoloration or excess wear that's on these friction plates. Uh, these don't have it, but they're actually, uh, yes they do. They're really hard to see, but there's small S's that are going to be right or basically three places around there and that allows fluid to get in between them for cooling and for when during during while they're free spinning for lubrication and then when they're clamped together while that fluid is released they stick together nice and hard this wave plate right here is one of the main plates that connects on the outside it will help also <clears throat> hydraulically compress and, and be the, the springing action basically on the, the compression of the release of this uh these clutches. So when you go put them in, if you were to get a bunch of brand new ones, the order here doesn't matter. All that does matter though is that you're going friction, spacer, friction, non friction, you know. So you're alternating like that. <clears throat> Obviously, these are all teeth all the same. These have alternating directions, so these are a little bit more important that you get these directions right. And again, refer to your manual because each manufacturer is a little bit different. So now we're going to go and move on to the next piece. All right, now we're going to move over to the input shaft. This is the input shaft that comes out the torque converter. It's up in the front portion of the transmission, sticks out into the bell housing. Um, we got some thrust washers that go up in here. So you're going to make sure that those are all in serviceable serviceability. You got a compound clutch assembly. It's down in here. These are spring loaded. There's a snap ring right in here. We didn't take this one apart, but also this one. Through here it helps control the clutches, which are your third and fourth clutch pack. And the gear assemblies go inside of this. These are also another pinion gear set. A little bit reverse. There's another planetary gear set, I'm sorry. Where this will be mounted on the shaft, and this is the connection shaft to the output portion. The carrier assembly, obviously your sun gear would be your output shaft. The carrier assembly, your planetary gears, your ring gears in here. This one here has a small little bearing set. We can get it out. Come on out. It doesn't want to come out now. There's a small little bearing right in here. You can 
they move around and those got small little needle bearings in it. So you want to make sure that has free movement to it. See how easily that comes together, goes together, comes apart. Again, different types of clutch packs. Again, they have thrust washers, friction washers, this one here. There's no friction material on these at all anymore. So this one here is burnt heavily. This one here has very little friction material left on it. This is heavily worn. So this one here would definitely require replacement if you're rebuilding to go and put this back in the car. To me, this is just a shop and example. We can tear it apart for students to use and take a gander at to learn some of the pieces. Again, look at the outer teeth. Find any that are bent or broken. Same thing on the inner teeth. We got a couple here that are fairly worn. They started wearing down right in these little grooves. You can see them. So that's so that you can see it's starting to use a little bit of axial, axial movement in it. It's right there, wears out that clutch in that gear. So now you'll have slipping gears. You won't be able to go forward or reverse, depending on which gear you it in, or sometimes both. Again, more gear sets and how they're showing. These ones here nice. They show nice, nicely how the, the, the grooves are to allow fluid to come in and out of. And then again, inspect the gear, inspect the uh, plates, look for the even wear on any of the friction material, even no wear or excess wear on the, the, the gear tube. This here is your, band, your, your, your brake band. It helps uh, engage and disengage some of the clutches. This will sit up around in through here. And then get, once it again engages, it'll tighten this up to stop this and transfer some of the power flow to different clutches. This will just sit down inside the tank now. That'll go down inside. We also got spring gear or spring clamps. These here help hold all the components together. So make sure that there's still tensile on them. You don't want to over flatten them or put them in too tight with these snap rings. Nice high tension ball. Over here is your uh, hydraulic valve body. Here's a gasket, plate, another gasket. That's your little, your little wood, your little paint, your key for holding in your holding still your, your brake. Your brake pad. Now this one here is missing a couple of the ball bearings in there. This is where all your fluid will sit. And when the valves that are right in here will be controlled electrically and hydraulically also by different forces, they will then change the hydraulic flow through the transmission. And this thing has a various number of different sensors to it. A little electrical harness as we go. We'll put it back together here in a little while. But at least this will hopefully get you a little bit of an overview of what the inside of an automatic transmission looks like. It looks overly complicated, but as long as you look, read a manual, follow the directions, it's not overly hard. Hope you got a little bit out of it.